Hello and welcome to Maya Animation. Uh, we're going to be um, animating this loot crate here. Um, this loot crate, as you can see, comes in two pieces. There's the bottom part and there's the top part. Uh, right now I have show wireframe over um, texture. I can change it to um, materials, but I think this looks better. Okay, so the first thing we notice is we have two objects here, is loot crate lid, loot crate base. And what we want to do is just animate the loot crate uh, opening. Um, so the first thing we need to learn about are pivots. Um, this where, uh, when I cycle through the different kinds of movement tools for this, where that little X shows up, Oops, went into sub-object mode. Um, where I um, touch these things, the, that point where these things come up is the pivot. There's the pivot for the lower one, and there's the pivot for the top one. And right now, if we were to try and open this crate um, from this point, uh, I'm going to hit E, and this brings up the rotational gizmo. Uh, and I'm going to go to frame one. This is the timeline here. You want to make sure that you have at least 32 frames and that this little button here, which is called auto key, is on. It's probably helpful to come up here and get into animation mode as well, because then all the tools for animation mode uh, are available to you. All right, so first thing we do um, is we need to set keys on these two pieces in order for them to uh, be animatable. It, they need an initial key set. So without, uh, oh, but before we do that, we have to fix things. Okay, so um, we won't set a key yet. <laughs> uh, so if I were to open this right now, I would like say that I would have to do a rotation and then a translation and that to go from the closed spot to the open spot. And that's a big pain in the butt because it's not easily animated doing that. I'm doing two functions to make a one thing happen. So if I go back here, uh, what I can do is alter where this pivot is. And by altering this pivot, think of this as like a hinge uh, or an anchor. Uh, this is what ties it to the world. So when I grab this, everything moves from that point. If I rotate it, it rotates around that point. If I scale it, uh, it scales around that point. Back here. Uh, if you hit D on your keyboard, you get a gizmo that looks like this. It's kind of got a, everything happening all at once. And this means that you're in uh, pivot edit mode. So I can drag the pivot over here. And if I do that now, this box, when I go to rotate it, it rotates from way over here. But uh, we would like it to rotate from like, as if it were a hinge. So I'm gonna hit D again. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna go into a right uh, front mode, I guess, because I obviously loaded this sideways. Um, and I'm going to take the pivot and move it so that it's, uh, if it's right as if it had a hinge on the thing. And you just click off of it, and then you're out of pivot mode. See, now the, the thing's gone, the little circle. Here's pivot mode. It's got a circle and the move thing. Click off, uh, and then it's just got the move thing, or just has a circle thing, or just has the scale thing. It doesn't have them all. So that's how you tell if you're in pivot mode. OK, so now that this is here, uh, we can animate it opening as if it had hinges. And that's not great, but it's not horrible. Um, I'll move it back a little bit. And when I now when I move it, the pivot goes with it. Okay, so now that we've got that, this one is fine, by the way. The pivot can be in the, in the middle of the box because we're going to, uh, it's going to move just fine like that. Okay, so, uh, one of the other things we'd like to do <clears throat> is to make sure that this piece always moves with this piece. So we're going to put what's called a constraint on it. 
which is um, where we're telling this piece to then be attached to it. So right now you can see the two pieces are separate here in the outliner. If I select one and then hold down shift and select the other and then hit P on my keyboard for parent, uh, we've now put them in a hierarchy. So if you look in this hierarchy key now, this is the boss, this is the child. I mean, the parent and the child. So now when I move this around, the top piece goes with it. But if I move the top piece, it doesn't go with it. Um, so I can animate the top piece. And as I animate the top piece, it's always connected to the bottom piece, um, which means that I can bring, I can animate this crate sliding across the floor and opening uh, because it's, this only animates as per its pivot. Um, but its world location is now tied to whatever world location this is. So anywhere I move this in the world, this one goes along for the ride. If I animate this, this one goes along for the ride. However, if I animate this, this one doesn't go for the ride. This one has its own deal. This one has its own deal, but it's connected to this. So basically, when you parent things, you're telling, I want this piece's world location to now be this uh, to be wherever this piece is. So if you animate this, this piece goes and its world location, meaning its origin uh, goes with it. It'll make sense. <laughs> uh, so what do we get out of this? So I'm gonna select both of these pieces and you can do this by sitting, uh, coming over here and hitting click, click. They both have to be selected. Uh, if you select this, it looks like they're both selected, but if you look over here, only one is. So we have to make sure that both are selected. Uh, we can marquee grab them, come up here and go select all. Um, oh, that didn't work. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> let's see. Select all. Uh, yeah, it only grabs the top one. Okay, don't hit select all. Here, uh, click either marquee, select them both, or shift select, or uh, control click both of them. And then I'm just going to hit uh, S on the keyboard, which sets a key. And if you come up here, you can use this to set key. Uh, to, in the key thing, a keyframe is an an, a frame of animation. And then as we step these frames of animation through our timeline here, it translates, rotates, or scales from point to point. So for instance, if we want this to open on frame 15, I can now uh, rotate this up here. And then the computer is going to do what's called interpolate. Uh, so the the computer knows that this is one of my keyframes and it knows that this is one of my keyframes. And so it does its best to figure out what the frames are between this key and this key. That's called interpolation. Do, 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 do. And it does this using a mathematic, uh, a mathematic uh, translation called um, a spline in this case. Uh, and the the math behind this is just how, uh, it, we know it goes from here to here, but uh, in Maya, there's various ways to get from here to here. Uh, and if I open what's called the graph editor, which lives in Windows Animation Editor's graph editor, you can see from here to here, uh, this is a spline translation. So it um, starts off slow, Right over the first couple of frames, it doesn't open very much. Then it opens quite a bit, and then it ends slow. So this is called ease in and ease out, and it's a very common animation thing. So common that they made it the default um, kind of translation. So if we watch this, right, it eases in, and then it starts slow, goes faster in the middle, and then ends slow. If you're doing stuff like rotation on tires or something like that, something mechanical that needs to move uh, without an ease in or ease out, like it needs to spin forever in a cycle, like car tires, you need to use this one here. These are the different kinds of tangents to use. Uh, a linear tangent, dunk, and that makes it go straight. So now instead of starting slow, going fast in the middle, ending slow, it moves at one speed. You. And you can switch back and forth uh, between those. You. These are called handles. When you're in spline uh, tangent editing mode, you can use them to adjust your waveform. So maybe you want this to start off really fast and then go slow and then end really fast instead of the other way around. So woo. <laughs> 
this opens and kind of flattens out there and then goes down. I think you probably want something more like that. Great, that is our first animation. Uh, oh, I wanna do one more thing. So if we take this lid, uh, if you hold down shift, you can click on the timeline and this makes the key active. If you then right click on it, you can copy that key. And then you can do the same thing, hit shift, turns a different color, uh, hit paste, paste key. And now you've taken this key, the very first key where it's closed and added it to your last key. So essentially, whoa, what did I do? <laughs> um, I somehow got a scale key when I was screwing around with it. Let's see, I have no idea why it's doing that. All right, let's go look. Windows Animation Editor, Graph Editor. I select all these, I can see all the different keys on things. Oh, I messed with the, the waveform on it, so it's freaking out. Doo -doo -doo. Let's just get rid of that middle key for now. You promise not to freak out on me? <laughs> There we go, that's how it should go. Eh, sometimes you gotta go in there and beat it up. Um, I, uh, sometimes Maya freaks out a little bit. It's always good to save often um, on that note. If you want to turn it on, you can go into Windows, uh, Settings and Preferences, Preferences, and find files over here in the side menu somewhere files, files and projects. Uh, it might be a good idea for you to turn on autosave wherever it went, oh, there's enable autosave every 10 minutes. Uh, this way you never lose more than 10 minutes work. I think it saves it into a repository in your downloaded files that you can retrieve at any time. It usually saves um, four versions every 10 minutes or every, every it saves it a version every 10 minutes, but uh, only goes back as far as four versions. So you should save your files more often than that. All right. So there's our first animation of a loot crate. Very exciting. Oh, so uh, the other thing you can do is say it was really windy in the room, right? Um, I'm gonna set keys for um, this case. Oh, that case might be the problem. Interesting, I wonder why it's so cranky. Huh. Um, I'll make sure this isn't messed up for you guys. To do one. And then you can see, I can move this wherever I want. I move this wherever I want, and that the door still has the same animation. I wonder why it's giving me crap. Why there's like a weird scale animation happening? Hmm. I thought I froze all that stuff. Anyways, we'll talk about that a little bit more. We're just concentrating on the animation bits. All right. Good luck with that. Uh, when you're done, I click in here. Hit play blast. I'm sorry. Go to the options. Make sure that it, you have a save file clicked. Make sure you have it play blast blasting to somewhere like your desktop. Name it loot crate and save it there. And then it makes a little movie of it. And then you can turn this in for credit. Cool. Just post that to the homework and so everybody can see and don't forget to comment on your uh, friend's work all right that is animating the loop right 